Hey, I'm Tom Fonz, host of The Best List. If you think he's just another pretty face, you're wrong. And if you think you can talk down to him, you are definitely wrong. Condescend me, man. I'll kill you, man. With World War Z coming out this week, what better time to take a look at the top 10 Brad Pitt movies? Number 10, True Romance and Thelma and Louise. Okay, so he's only on screen for like 10 minutes in Thelma and Louise. But I appreciate your time. Y'all have a good day, all right? And for like 10 seconds in True Romance, but these movies are way too good not to mention. Boy, can't you answer the door at least for me? Oh man, I didn't even hear. And come on, a scene between stoner Brad Pitt and Tony Soprano? How does it get any better than that? Safari Motel. Yep. How do you know that? I mean, have you been over there? No. Well, they were here, and they said that they were going to go there, and they went. Number nine, Burn After Reading. Not the best Coen Brothers film, but a good film, and another memorable Pitt performance, this time as a Jim Rat Schwinn bicycle riding moron. You think that's a Schwinn? A character so obnoxiously idiotic. The guy? You just want to punch him in the face. Number eight, Snatch. Sometimes a character's voice is hard to understand and it hurts the film. That's a lovely, lovely voice. And sometimes it makes the film that much better. You like that? Dags. What? Yeah, dogs. Dogs. Yeah, you like that? Oh, dogs. <laughs> sure. I like dogs. It also doesn't hurt when that character can kick anyone's ass. Number seven, Ocean's Eleven. Hey, remember when Soderbergh brought us films that didn't star male strippers or American gladiators or porn stars? And that feeling when you connect with the client is the best feeling in the world, and I don't want to be sort of down on that. Oh my god, give me a Soderbergh film with some real actors in it! Guys, what's the first lesson in poker? Never bet on the, uh... No, uh, leave emotion at the door. That's right, Tove. Sure, there are better heist movies, but none of them more fun than Ocean's Eleven. We're set. We're set. We're set. Do it already. Why don't you check the batteries? Number six, 12 Monkeys. Terry Gilliam is known for casting great actors and getting even greater performances out of them, and 12 Monkeys is no exception. I, I guess they give us some chemical restraints, huh? Drugs! What'd they give you? Thorzy? Haldol? How much? How much? Learn your drugs. Know your dose. It's elementary. Pitt's performance is so marvelous in this movie, it's just amazing that this guy... Wackos everywhere, plague of madness. ...is the same person as this guy. Hey, Mr. Moore. Uh, oh, I got some office stuff here for... Ah, uh, class isn't over yet, is it? Number five, the assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford. A lot of people didn't like this movie, which makes me wonder, what is wrong with people? This is like when I find out someone doesn't like cheddar cheese, or IPA beers, or the Beatles. I'm, I'm flabbergasted. What sort of strange, mixed-up world do we live in where people didn't like this movie? Yeah, it's a wonderful world. To no surprise, it was made by the same director as Chopper, another great, underrated film. I'll give you 20 seconds to produce some cash, or so I'll shoot you. One, hey, two, I've got three, no cash, mate. Four, I told you, I've got no You're coming. Seven, eight, eight, nine. Shut the f down, Stan. Hey, 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 11, hey, hey, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. This movie is incredible and arguably Pitt's finest performance. I'll creep up behind that cashier and I'll cock his head back like so. And I'll say, how come an off scouring of creation like you still suck in there with so many mining coffins? I'll say, how did you get to reach your 20th birthday without leaking out all of your clothes? And if I don't like his attitude, I will slit that Phil Doodle so deep, he will flop on the floor like a fish. <laughs> My God, what just happened? <laughs> Number four, Inglorious Bastards. Over the years, there's been some great Nazi killers portrayed on film. Uh, let's see, Dirty Dozen. Captain America, Indiana Jones, and of course, Lieutenant Aldo Rain. Each and every man under my command owes me 100 Nazi scalps. And I want my scalps. And all y'all will get me 100 Nazi scalps, taken from the heads of 100 dead Nazis. Or you will die trying. Lieutenant Aldo Rain doesn't just kill Nazis, he turns the whole act of it into an art form. <laughs> Something you bitch? I think this just might be my masterpiece. 
And in my opinion, this is one of Tarantino's top four films. Actually, we're all tickled to hear you say that. Number three, Moneyball. It's America's pastime, and although I enjoy watching it, I'm not a huge baseball fan. How can you not be romantic about baseball? I don't know, I'm just not. But this movie, I am a fan of, a huge fan of. Pitt's Oscar nod was well deserved, and with scenes like this, how can you not be inspired by this fantastic film? Jeremy's about to realize that the ball went 60 feet over the fence. He hit a home run. He didn't even realize it. Number two, seven. Before David Fincher portrayed Brad Pitt as a weird old man baby. How old are you? Seven, but I look a lot older. He portrayed him as the brash, impulsive Detective Mills. Detective! You're looking for me. Ah! It's hard to stand out when you're acting alongside Morgan Freeman and Kevin Spacey, but Pitt does more than just hold his own. He's phenomenal, especially when asking the most infamous question of all. Who's in the box? Because I envy your normal life. Put the gun down, David. It seems that envy is my son. No, oh, what's in the box? Not till you give me the what's gun. What's in the Box. If you haven't seen this movie, I'll give you a hint. It's not a dick. It's my dick in a box. And our number one Brad Pitt movie is Fight Club. The first rule of Fight Club is you do not talk about Fight Club. The second rule of Fight Club is you do not talk about Fight Club. Tyler Durden may be the most iconic Brad Pitt character to date, and although he can get a little preachy at times, it's only after we've lost everything that we're free to do anything. He's still an amazing character and a complete badass. Well, unless you hit him in the ear. Oh. Mother! You hit me in the ear! Well, that's our top 10 Brad Pitt films, a stellar bunch of movies that we should all be thankful for, so let's all forgive Brad Pitt for making this happen. There you are. My luck, my fate, my fortune. Chanel number five. And let me know if you think California, Benjamin Button, or Seven Years in Tibet should be on here. And don't write Troy or Mr. or Mrs. Smith down below. You are probably at the wrong YouTube channel. Watch Le Best List every Wednesday and let it excite your senses. <coughs> <coughs> oh god, I got some of it in my eye. <coughs> Today we take a look at the top 10 summer blockbusters of all time. Will a Transformers movie make it on the list? Shia, what do you think? No, 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 no! Get your film fix. Subscribe to Cinefix.